Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day seven of the Leap Code Daily Challenge. Hit mix it a week. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's poem. 2024, maximize the confusion of an exam. Why would you maximize it? Seems like it's more like Leap Code maximizing the confusion of their poems, but that's besides the point. Anyway, all right. The teacher is writing true force, T is true, F is force. That would be confusing if it was the other way around, but <laughs> that's besides the point. It was to maximize the number of consecutive questions of the same answer. Um, that would be pretty evil, actually. Alright, so I mean, okay, so you're, you're trying to... Okay, so what can you do? You're given K, which is the number of times you may perform the operation, which is change toggle one of them, right? Alright, I mean, that sounds pretty reasonable. Uh, this... Of course, if you've done yesterday's prom, then, you know, today is probably a very natural extension and really, um, wouldn't say plug and play, but pretty ex natural extension. Um, but also, you can kind of see immediately that, you know, obviously, if K is equal to 1, then you have the same solution. But uh, for non-1 Ks, that, uh, you know, uh, you have to... You know, you have to start doing other things, right? You cannot just do like a... Um, what did we do? Oh. Was this in a sliding window? I forget which one was yesterday. Maybe the day before. Maybe I got them confused because I was like... Huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, two days ago. The the longest array of once after deleting it. My bad. Uh, these farms are mixed together for it, but then I was like, huh, some fuse it all off. But in any case, yeah. So obviously you can't do that technique where you just kind of split them up. Uh, you just have to use sliding window. And and I think I talked about this in the past. I talked about it a lot, so probably in the past at least once, which is that sliding window is one of those problems where um, it's sort of greedy, but the the key part about it is is trying to figure out the invariant um, so, uh, at each point of the code such that um, based on this invariant you can use other things on it right and that's basically the idea um, behind these problems in general uh, yeah and and of course one uh, wrinkle is that you can be all be true or all could be false or whatever consecutive truths consecutive false and of course um, you just do the same thing, but run it twice, right? One for true, one for false, and, you know, uh, don't complicate it too much. So, yeah, okay, so let's get to it, I suppose. So, yeah, so for, uh, yeah, so let, let's write this function for consecutive, right? And the way that I, <coughs> I, I think experience and kind of being, and with experience, makes it easier to visualize the code ahead of time. And visualizing the head of, code ahead of time means you don't have to kind of, um, because of experience, you kind of able, you are able to kind of, you know, have more, uh, uh, just more in your working memory, right? Um, what I would recommend you do if you uh, are a little bit, and maybe during the contest, I think, during this problem. Uh, you will see me do this where I waited for one thing and then I kind of, uh, for this kind of problem, I would do it for twice, right? So let me actually do it that way. Let me not, not jump ahead. But I would also say that if, with experience, you can actually jump ahead a little bit in some manner of speaking, right? So yeah, uh, okay. So let's just say we have for I is, um, okay, yeah. So same thing as a couple of, oh, and yesterday, right? So So we have... We have this sliding window thing, uh, keeping in mind that we have to define the bounds as inclusive, exclusive. Uh, so yeah, so right now we're going to care about uh, correct as you go to, you know, you could actually modularize this, but like I said, you, you could do T or F, right? Uh, maybe that's the key, I don't know, you want to say something like this, I don't know, right? 
And now um, we have the best, which we can actually take it outside. And we can say the current one. No, we don't. Or like how, how many things are inside the, um, how many, not incorrect, but the opposite thing that are inside, right? So uh, naming things is hard. So uh, <laughs> let's just say count is equal to zero. Maybe count is kind of hard to read, to be honest, but uh, it takes time to figure that out, I suppose. But yeah, so we've entered key of right is equal to correct. Uh, if this is not equal to correct, then count we increment by one, right? Because that means that count is the number of the opposite uh, things inside left, right, inclusive, right? Yeah. So yeah, so then now this means that left and right inclusive now uh, are in the, the thing. And then, however, while count is greater than k, that means that we have too many incorrect things. We have to, uh, remo we have to remove it from the left. So, so if da -da 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 -da, uh, we increment by one. And so in here, this is where the invariant is, right? In wherein here is count is less than or equal to k. So that means that we can now do the thing. Uh, yeah. And there's also some other uh, um, invariants because after here, also left is less than or equal to right. Even though it's not explicit as, you know, while count is greater than k is a very obvious explicit loop, but left is less than right because when left is equal to right, Oh, sorry. When left is equal to right plus one, uh, count is equal is or even when left is equal to right, uh, no, no, no. When left is greater than and right, it's going to be zero, right? Count is zero, so th that's going to end this no matter what because this is zero and. This is always going to be false. So there's some like invariant things there. Man, my voice is still a little bit gone. But yeah, and then now best is equal to max best. Again, right minus left plus one. And then we can just return best afterwards. Uh. Looks okay. So let's give it some minute. Hopefully I didn't have a typo or anything. And there we go. 1193 is day streak. Uh, yeah, what did I do last time? Yeah. Yeah, usually I, I write, rewrite it as a function so that I can kind of, and then I just kind of reverse this. But the way I, I wrote it, this is a little bit sloppier, to be honest, huh. during the contest. But that was like two years ago. Not that I remember. It. But today it's a little bit cleaner because we take advantage of the invariant, right? Um, why, do I, why do I have this like three times? Oh. I guess I didn't need this three times. I could just take it out, but maybe during the contest, during the contest, correctness is more important than than whatever. So, oh, this is a while loop. That's why I was a little bit confused. Um, and this assumes everything is true. So it is true. Do 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 do. And current is the, the number of things. Yeah, I did everything like almost in reverse in that way. But yeah, um, this is going to be linear time, constant space. And yeah, that's all I have for this one. It's pretty similar to a combination of the last, uh, yesterday's, actually yesterday's, and two days ago, which is the one that, um, yeah, you can only skip one. Uh, yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Uh, stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.